Morning everyone, uh, my name is Liz, for those of you who don't know me, I'm one, I'm one of the leaders at St Thomas Baptist Church and uh, it is my pleasure to bring you the thought for the week for this week. Last Sunday, November the 22nd, was the last Sunday before the period of before Advent which starts this coming Sunday. The Sunday before Advent is commonly known as Stir Up Sunday. And that has made me reflect on the subject of Advent, which in the Latin literally means to come, ad, to, and venere, to come. First of all, how and why did Stir Up Sunday come to be known as that? For the Sunday before Advent, the colic used in the Anglican Church for the Sunday begins, Stir up, we beseech thee, O Lord, the wills of thy faithful people. And that's in the Book of Common Prayer, 1662. Hence, the name given to the last Sunday before Advent. Since Victorian times, Stir Up Sunday has become associated with the family custom of preparing the Christmas pudding together, when it became part of most British Christmas meals. The pudding was introduced to Britain by Prince Albert, consort to Queen Victoria, although it is thought that a version of the pudding was introduced by George I, also known as the Pudding King, um, from Germany in 1714. Apparently, traditionally, there would be 13 ingredients in the pudding representing Jesus and the 12 disciples. Nowadays, the custom has largely died out, as fewer folk make their own puddings. However, the whole point of this is to think a bit about being stirred up, even so, though some meanings of the, these two words are perhaps not where I want to go today, um, as in stirring up conflict. For example, Proverbs 15 verse 18 says, A hot-tempered person stirs up conflict, but the one who is patient calms a quarrel. The kind of stirring to which I want to refer is to rouse us from lethargy or to stir us into action or to spur us on and to prepare, prepare us for what lies ahead. During the period of Advent, Advent, there's an opportunity to prepare to celebrate once again the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ and once again hear the Christmas message of the Son of God himself coming to dwell on earth with us, fully human and fully yet fully God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. We've seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And that's John 1 verse 14. However, there is a need to be stirred up and ready for the return of Christ himself. Let's read together Matthew chapter 25 verses 1 to 13, which is the parable of the foolish, of the ten virgins. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The, the bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry came out, Here's the bridegroom, come out and meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of our oil. Our, our lamps are going out. No, they replied. There may not be enough for both, both us and for you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone on their way to get the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast, wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Sir, sir, they, sh they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. 
Jesus tells this parable about a wedding and the anticipation of the arrival of the bridegroom. In Jewish culture, a, a, a couple would be engaged for a long time before the actual marriage happened. On the wedding day, the bridegroom would go to the bride's home uh, for the ceremony, for the wedding ceremony. Then the bride and groom, along with a crowd of people, would go to the groom's house, where the wedding feast, often lasting several days, would take place. In this parable, the ten virgins, five foolish ones who did not have extra oil with them, and five wise who were fully prepared for the feast, await the arrival of the bridegroom. Whilst waiting, the bridesmaids fell asleep, and of course, when the bridegroom arrived, the five foolish virgins found that their lamps were going out, but the five wise virgins were fully prepared. By the time the five foolish ones had managed to buy extra oil, the wise virgins had already gone into the marriage banquet, and the five foolish ones found the door firmly shut against them. It was too late to join the feast. They'd missed the arrival of the bridegroom. And in fact, as they pleaded to go into the feast, the bridegroom says in verse 12, Truly, I tell you, I don't know you. What an indictment and what a warning. When Jesus returns to take his people to be with him, we must be ready as individuals. Spiritual pre preparedness cannot be bought or borrowed at the last minute. Our relationship with God must be our own. There is the need to be stirred up and in a day-by-day -day relationship with the Lord himself. May the Lord keep you stirred up, bless you, and keep you close to him in these days. Bye.